Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, March 23rd, and today we're going to do a honu, or sea turtle, in graphite and coffee. It's kind of hard getting live today. There seems to be a lot of people going live right now. Um, so we're going to get into this right now. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a preliminary sketch of the honu, or sea turtle. So we're going to be using this whole area here. Again, um, I'm using a graphite drawing pencil from Kimberly. It is a 4B. You're going to need coffee. And then um, my wife, who graciously cooked down some of that same coffee. And when you cook it down, she just put it in the microwave for a couple minutes. And so I took away a lot of the water. So you get this really dark coffee. This is actually, I believe, this is from our Nespresso. And then she graciously let me borrow her water container that she made out of ceramic clay. So it's some water to rinse off your brush. I'm using a Simply Simmons uh, round number four. This is a really affordable brush. I think this is about two bucks. So I have a, a bunch of these brushes. Um, they're pretty good brushes in the fact that, you know, they're, they're very cheap, they're very affordable, not cheap, but they're affordable. And they work well for both watercolor and acrylic. So we're gonna be using this primarily. If you don't have a brush, you can use um, a Q-tip. Um, if you have any kind of um, brush element that you have in your house, that could be a substitute. This is just a really simple brush. Um, you can, they're on Amazon. Again, it's a Simply Simmon number four. Okay, I, I highly recommend checking out the, the kind of brushes that they offer because they're really cool. So, uh, first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to draw the head of our turtle, and we might not fit the whole thing in, but that's okay, all right? All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to start with the head of the turtle. And we're going to kind of keep it like a circular, circular shape here, and then kind of ellipse, ellipse that, you know, extend it a little bit so it's more of an oval. And we're going to put a little circle on the top here, which is going to be for the eye of our turtle, okay? And we're going to come around here, Let me elongate the neck. Just a little bit, and we're going to create an elliptical shape here, which is going to represent our Hunu shell. I'm going to come around here and kind of draw the whole shell. And this is going to be kind of an almond shape, as you can see. See that? All right. So we're doing kind of an almond with another, almost like an almond on this side too as well, okay? All right, so that's our next step. All right, then we're going to draw a fin over here. And sea turtles have these really long front fins that allow them to ply through the waters. We're gonna make this kind of a sickle shape almost. I'm sure some of you have seen Finding Nemo. And we're gonna draw a fin that's kind of coming towards us here. So it's gonna be much bigger And it's going to be kind of coming towards us here, as you can see. Making this look kind of like it's coming towards us, okay? And then it looks like we're going to have just a little bit of room to draw kind of a rem, like just a little indication of those back fins. Okay, 
and you don't you don't want to make them necessarily too um, airplane looking you want to keep them kind of a natural edge these are reptiles cold-blooded so right now I'm just trying to do a kind of organic broken edge here I'm gonna do the same thing over here okay now I'm also going to indicate where the shell is so this is this you know they're not <laughs> it's not quite like a cartoon where you know the the tortoise can come out of its shell. The shell is a part of their body. So we will draw a delineating line here where the edge here is. And where we can start seeing the bottom of the shell. Okay. And then this is the top of the shell. All right. All right, now we're gonna go back in with the eyes. We're gonna figure out how those look. So, again, we're gonna push this forward a little bit. This is just a placeholder. And turtles have, sea turtles have beaks. They don't have mouths in the, in the sense of, you know, like a fish or something like that. They are beaked animals. So we're going to indica indicate a beak. And we have these lines that kind of break down this way. And then we're going to do the eye, which is a very large, distinctive part of the sea turtle. They have these really questing, beautiful, curious eyes. Okay, that's going to be a nice placeholder for our eye of our sea turtle, and then a nostril. We're just going to indicate some stuff here. Okay, so now we have the head of our sea turtle, kind of like the outline of where everything is going to go. We're also going to have these delineating lines that show the edge of the turtle shell. Okay. I'm going to go through now and kind of erase all this, all my kind of initial marks to kind of clean things up because we're going to be painting this with our coffee and we want to kind of keep it clean because once we start painting with the coffee, the coffee itself is going to be how we describe space and tone. And this is gonna be a multi kind of step process in how we apply the paint, or in this case, coffee as paint, if that makes any sense. So again, I'm, I'm just cleaning up my lines and getting rid of any stray marks that I don't want to include after I'm done painting. So again, I'm just cleaning up my edges a little bit. Okay. So, Next thing, the next thing I'm going to do after I've cleaned up all my stray lines and things is I'm going to start building um, the scales on a sea turtle and all the different um, geometrics that go within each appendage, the shell, the head, okay? And so I'm going to use my brush. How's it going, Nate? Hello, Molly. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use um, this cup of coffee, which is kind of like the light version. It's going to be like the middle tones. And I'm going to use this to kind of start to add all the large scales. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave space between these scales. So the, the paper itself becomes a dividing factor or the lines between each scale. And I'm just going to build this up slowly. And what's going to happen is I'm going to have to go back in later and kind of fill in some of these spots. But again, I'm leaving 
white space between these scales as I'm going through. Okay, so, and then the beak here is going to be darker. And so again, I'm using the shape of the coffee itself to describe scales and kind of having my, my lines and everything kind of describe also the roundness of the head of the turtle, okay? Now what's also interesting is that we also have the eye of a turtle and I'm gonna just fill this in for right now. It's got little scales up here and I'm just gonna do little dashies. All right. Dalton, it's not a competition, okay? I love both of you. Of course, I will say this, you were the one that took my class. So, hello. Yes, the coffee is the watercolor for today. And I'm just doing initial tones here. So, what's happening on the top of the, the head of the turtle is you have these large kind of dark scales and underneath on the underside are going to be dark lines that define light scale. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of draw lines that interconnect and create other scales. And one. Hello, Matt. So we're just using coffee right now to define these areas. And I'm trying to go slow so you guys can, you know, follow along as I'm going. So right now I'm also showing like the not only the scales, but also the texture of the turtle's neck. It's got these wrinkles and stuff that allow it to move around. I'm doing individual scales. And notice how my drawing itself, my drawing itself was very simple, it was more like a, a line drawing. And I'm going through and just kind of filling in, rather than draw that with a pencil, I'm filling in this information with the coffee. Okay. So in these areas between like the major appendages, like the fins, the head, we're gonna keep this kind of lining wavy and kind of wrinkly, if that makes any sense. And notice I'm using, I'm just pulling my brush. I'm not putting too much weight on it. I'm pulling the brush, allowing the brush to do most of the work as we go through. And I'm showing wrinkles. Hey, how you doing, Athena? And, oh, okay. So I'm just using the brush right now to describe this space and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to use a q-tip to show some of these areas in the larger areas so right now I'm going to use a q-tip saturated with the coffee I'm going to roll it kind of roll it in the coffee and for these larger areas where I'm going to be doing the large like scales here I'm going to go on the edge and kind of and I'm not putting too much pressure because I don't want to do that. But again, I'm going to leave space between each mark that I'm making. So that creates the illusion that there's, you know, space going through there. These lines. Okay. So I'm working my way up. Kind of smudging and pulling. So the coffee that I'm using is actually from our Nespresso machine. 
Um, but you can use any coffee. It can be a French French press. It can be a drip. Doesn't really matter. So I'm going to make these areas on the bottom here a little bit bigger. Okay. And then between these, I'm going to draw other patterns. But again, notice how I'm interconnecting the lines so that they kind of match up and look organic. And hopefully this coffee dries fast. So that we want to do the big one right there. And then as we go up here, I'm going to kind of make these more elliptical because they're further away and they're actually going back. So yeah, cotton swabs are good for the large areas, but they're not going to be the best thing for these for the smaller stuff, if that makes any sense. But notice how I'm trying to push and using the, and some, here's the thing, I'm getting to the point where this cotton swab is gonna die. So I'll have to switch, rotate. And I'm, I'm not making the shapes uniform, all right? I'm not trying to do that. Okay, I'm gonna switch this one. Now I switch sides. I'm gonna go through and do these guys down here. Start from the inside and work my way out. Okay. Now I'm also going to kind of start from the top here and I'm, I'm putting a lot of information down. So I'm using Q-tip again to describe space. And these are the large sections of the shell on the top. Okay. See that? All right, so each cell. I'm trying to get as much information down as possible so that this will have time to dry. So I can go over sections. that and we're cruising hope you guys are all having a wonderful idea yeah I'm using a reference but I'm kind of making stuff up too at the same time wouldn't it be nice if I actually had a Honu a live Honu in my house that would take a huge tank though and I don't know about you guys but the idea of animals in captivity is a tough one for me to swallow. So I'm actually going to include this is the underside here that I want to kind of reference. And put a little shadow down here. Okay. More shadow down here. Come around. Okay. And again, I'm using kind of the boiled down. Yeah, hey, Oliver, I'm good. Just arting here, brother. Shadow. All right. So now I'm going to go back. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to go back in with my brush. Now that I've done a lot of 
a lot of the space of the fins. I'm going to go in and also kind of do some of the detail here. And notice how you can layer this and then go back in with darker tones of the coffee, okay? Which I'm doing. And it's important that no matter what you do, don't beat yourself up if you make a mistake. You can always go back. You can always try this again. There's no, there's no winning or failing. It's constantly in, improving your craft and getting better and getting more comfortable with the medium itself. So, you know, it's something that I tell my students all the time. It's like, I'd rather you concentrate on engaging in the process versus creating something perfect and beautiful. Not everything is meant to go onto the refrigerator wall. All right, so I'm going to start filling in some of these areas, too, on this fin. And these are going to be directional lines that I'm cutting. Pulling these forward here. And then these guys that connect to give it that three-dimensional kind of feel. Okay. And I'm actually using a photograph, so... And I'm not trying to make this look like the photograph. I'm just trying to make a cool coffee painting of a honu, a sea turtle. If that makes any sense. How y'all doing? Hey, McCarty. How you doing, brother? So I've been getting some questions about what, this, what setup I'm using. I'm using an old copy slash photo stand from, I believe, the 70s or 60s um, that I dug up out of my classroom prior to the shutdown of our school. And I'm also using a, <laughs> this is my iPhone. I'm using a, a wireless mic setup that I purchased many months ago online through Amazon. It was like 20 bucks or something like that. And it's actually a really good setup. I'm enjoying it. It's working. So I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna be drawing some scales here, some big scales some little scales, and I'm connecting them all, okay? So again, I'm just doing a little outlining here too as well. I'm pushing this a little bit closer together, and rather than being spots, I want that to be more geometric, if that makes any sense. Hope you guys are all having a wonderful Shelter in place, even though it's probably not what we all want to do. I've been going a little stir crazy myself. I will be honest. Um, it's tough. It, it's, you'd think, oh, this is like a vacation. It's really not, because on a vacation, you're able to move around and go places. Here, it's like, no, we're not being encouraged to do that. Okay. All right. Now I'm also going to go back into the head of the sea turtle and do another coat. And this might take several coats to get the eye, the, the kind of the tone that I want. And I'm also going to do texture around the eye. Go in with some of the scales. Do, 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 do. Yeah. And again, this is just, I have a graphite pencil, a, a rubber eraser you can buy at any office supply store. This brush you can pick up at any craft store if they're open, or you can order it online. Again, Simply Simmons. And a cup of coffee. 
So again, I'm going to go through, I did in the initial kind of wash. I'm going to go in now and build up my tones. Hey, Lauren Aiello, how are you? Mr. Rubio. I highly recommend if you can get some get some good coffee before you do anything like this. It really helps. And shout out to my assistant today, my wife Jen, for helping me set this up and brewing the coffee. Thank you very much. What I'm painting on is um, the same stuff that I have all my art one, my beginning kids use. It's a white sulfite, weight 60. So it holds, it hold, it can, you can paint on it, you can, you can draw on it, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. It's really amazing multimedia stuff. And this is what we build our sketchbooks with. So they can do paintings in their books. All kinds of stuff. How's it looking so far, guys? How are we doing? You don't have... Okay, oh. I'm so sorry. You don't have coffee, awesome sor awesome source. Uh, hmm. You can also use tea. Um, Earl Grey English Breakfast... Jasmine tea, it's all really, that's really dark tea. You could use that. Um, beet juice, too, as well. You won't get these rich browns, but um, you, you might be able to do something cool with that. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go through and kind of darken these values here. My light source is going to be from above, so all this stuff down here is going to be a little bit darker. Yeah. You still have your sketchbook? That's awesome. That makes me very happy. Sometimes it breaks my heart when kids leave their sketchbooks. It really does. I'm like, oh, man. You spent all that time making it, and then you just abandon it? I don't, I don't know. It's not like a, a workbook or anything that you you yourself didn't work on, you know, it's something that you made with your own two hands. It just breaks my heart when people don't take it with them. Okay, we're about 27 minutes in. We're cooking along here. Do some more indications of shell pieces. Going down. Do, do, do. You are using your sketchbook. Oh my gosh. Oh, Ange, you're killing me, dude. That's awesome. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna actually put this in shadow. Back fins of our tortoise, of our sea turtle, our hunu. And I'm kind of moving towards just getting a lot of this done because the one thing I do want to do is finish this before Instagram like turns me off. Again, going through and kind of darkening some values. I hope I'm not going too fast. I probably am going too fast for you, for a lot of you. I'm not trying to. Okay, we initially put down a lot of these values with a Q-tip. I'm just going to go through and kind of clean up some of these edges. So tomorrow, we're going to go back to graphite, or maybe tomorrow I'll do, I don't know, maybe I'll do a ballpoint pen drawing and you guys can learn how to, to do some cool value drawings with 
pen and ink or ballpoint pen. And that's another thing that you can find around your house. You don't need anything special. All right? And you can do some amazing things with a ballpoint pen. Um, and what used to be one of my favorite things to draw with was a ballpoint pen. It can be a little intimidating because A, if you're a beginner and you're not confident yet in your line, you might be like, oh, I can't erase if I make a mistake. Well, that's okay. I'm gonna show you a technique tomorrow that will enable you, if you make a mistake, that just becomes a part of the piece itself. All right, we're gonna go up here to the top of the shell. And we're gonna kind of, we're gonna add value or we're gonna add coffee to the bottom and just kind of flick up, flick up. Give it that sea turtle kind of texture. Okay. Same thing over here. Just gonna do it. Yeah, the laser noises actually help. Yeah. And we're going to have your lines up here. On the top, this is where the, the kind of the shell is kind of wrapping down. We're going to put some marks so we can see those marks. Kind of wrap them up. So, same kind of thing. Hi, Brianna. Yeah, no mistakes, just happy accidents. St Star Wars drawings when we were kids. Ah, hey, Mark. I don't know, if, we, if this continues again, like I was saying, uh, I think last week, if this continues into May, I'm definitely going to be doing some Star Wars stuff. For the kids, and for the kids and all of us, I think. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. Just kind of going through and tap happening is I'm just cleaning up, darkening values that have been getting progressively kind of lighter as we go along. And yeah, just doing some washes now. Hi, Sage. How you doing, Hewitt? So I think we're pushing out some more assignments for you guys. For those of you who are in my Art One class, and we did some updates, both Mrs. Letterly and I did some updates on the portfolio process for AP. We got some information from, shout out to Mr. Johnston, uh, about what's happening with the AP portfolios. Um, so that information should be going out today. Listen, just if you're in my class and you want your work to be assessed, make sure, please make sure that you are uploading images of your work to the class folder, okay? So right now I'm just darkening some values. Now I'm going back to kind of like the lighter coffee and using that as a wash. So delineating between the top and the bottom of the turtle to create a nice even kind of wash here for certain areas. We're getting close to being done though. 
Maybe I'll do some fishies or something like that to go along with this. We're going to go back into the beak area with some of the darker espresso that's been, again, kind of cooked down. Okay. Go back in. Do the eye. So all this really takes is a little bit of patience. As you're, as you're working through this and you just come back to certain areas, you know? Come back to certain areas while you're working on this turtle. <laughs> Mr. Couture Planner, you are taking apart a bed. That's awesome. Whatever it takes, man, during this, this crazy time, man. Seriously. Whatever it takes. Thank you all for joining me today for this. Um, I didn't really know what I was going to do for Monday, but it seemed like because I had given an assignment to my Art One kids to paint using coffee, I thought it would be best if I actually did a project with coffee. You know? So again, going it back in, darkening some of these values, just by going over it with the darker coffee. I'm actually going to make this section right here pretty dark, so I'm going to go through and kind of darken all these values. Yeah. So, darken all the values on the fins of the turtle. And again. Just waiting for certain sections to dry, and then I'll go back in and hit them again. So tomorrow will probably be a pen and ink drawing project. So if you can find an old ballpoint pen, and I'm thinking I also want to teach people how to use um, crayons which is probably my favorite thing to draw with. Because you can do some amazing things with crayon. And it's probably one of the oldest tools for drawing used by man. So I'll probably teach how to use just regular old Crayola crayons. And I, I normally just use a black or brown, nothing fancy, um, for drawing with. Because it's just, I don't know, I just love drawing with black crayons or brown crayons. They're really cool. All right. Ah. Well, I have sold. What's funny is I have sold. Um, one of the drawings that I've been doing during this creative quarantine. Um, but I sold it not to myself. It wasn't like something, the profits aren't going towards me. I actually encourage people, if you want to purchase anything, what I want you to do is make a donation to This Club Saves Lives. Okay, and then that can be your payment. 
because this Club Saves Lives is one of the nonprofits that's been working really hard with uh, getting food donations out to the community members that are in far off places in rural environments that it's kind of hard to get to. And they've been working tirelessly to get uh, donations donated as well as distributing said food items out to those community members. So if you're interested in this, yeah, definitely please do that. <laughs> You're buying this? You calling dibs? All right, just DM me. And DM me. All right, so let's think. What should? We, what else should we add to this sucker? About twenty more minutes, and I might end a little bit early today. Um, it's went a lot faster than I had initially thought it would. Just cleaning up the edges here. Hi, Mia. <laughs> I think I'm going to name this turtle Jack. through and darken these bad boys a couple more times. And boom. All right, folks. So this is painting of a sea turtle or honu using uh, coffee. Again, if you're going to want a really dark tone, I, I highly recommend you take some coffee that you've brewed Put it into another container and then cook it down either in a microwave or you can put it on a pan and, and, and cook it down that way. Um, this is the first cup of coffee that was brewed to go with this. Uh, my wife made it for me this morning for this project. And then she took a, about a tablespoon of it and cooked it down. And that's, that's it. Um, tomorrow, uh, we are going to... Definitely be doing a pen and ink drawing using a ballpoint pen. This is going to kind of go along with um, one of the projects that I assigned my Art One kids for this um, self self quarantine <laughs> kind of time. Again, um, Simply Simmons brush number four. I think they're like two or three bucks, less than less than three. I think Q tip, both ends. And that's it. Thank you very much for uh, joining me today for this project. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow again at 11 o'clock. We're going to be doing a ballpoint pen drawing. So uh, please join me tomorrow. Hi, Lillian. Hi, Amaya. So make sure that you are tuning in tomorrow, 11 o'clock, uh, for the next uh, live Creative Quarantine. Thank you very much. Have a blessed and wonderful day.